Welcome everyone, Questine here with a discussion about the minor gods in Age of Mythology Retold. Already covered the Greeks, so now it's time to cover the Egyptians. And with the Egyptians, based on how things have shaped up in the meta, keeping in mind that the meta is likely to change over the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, but here are how things stand at the moment. In terms of an S-tier minor god, it has to be Anubis, by far and away. Any Egyptian player that has access to him is going to want to go Anubis. The Anubite, pretty decent unit. Decent at harassing, decent at dealing a good amount of damage. Doesn't have the best scalability in terms of a long game, but certainly a very, very useful unit to have early on, especially when you're talking about having classical age capability. And that is an advantage. The Serpents... It's a one-time use thing. You don't really want to recast Serpents from my perspective or very, very rarely, very situationally. And to begin with, they're not particularly useful unless you're using them in an early game fight to just swing it around in your favor or trying to deny your opponent the ability of finishing a structure. That is certainly a use for them. But the true benefit of Anubis beyond the Anubites is his upgrade that gives you 10% extra favor. Now, the Egyptians have a hard limit on how much favor they can generate for the monuments. So, the, the Atlanteans. And so, this 10% favor benefit, which would be very significant for any civilization, to be clear, is especially important for the Egyptians. And that is the reason Anubis gets S tier. There's very few situations where you'd want to go with anyone else, in particular because of how the other minor gods are for Egypt. Then we have Bast. I think Bast is a B-tier minor god. Her wood benefit is probably the most substantial part of it. You can talk about Eclipse, sure. If games were lasting longer, it can give you a significant boost one time, in particular if you have a decent number of myth units, if you do have ancestors, it can give you that extra jump in power, and it does give you a favor benefit during its duration, which apparently people didn't, a lot of people didn't know for a very, very long time because it wasn't in tooltip like hidden benefits. Yeah, the original tooltips weren't necessarily that great. So that is absolutely useful. But at the same time, the myth unit, it's not bad. But in order to really make full use of it, you do need to get those upgrades. And let me just say, for a classical age god to have to get expensive upgrades, well, not really the most expensive, but still expensive enough to really fully utilize a myth unit is not particularly great. And it's not like the fully upgraded version of the myth unit is going to be that fantastic either. So that is a downside from my perspective. Her farming benefit... It's not important at all in the vast majority of games that are taking that are happening right now online in 1v1 in team games in longer games if the meta does shift to a longer game short sure, boss would be far better you know recasting eclipse would be significantly more important but as it stands I can't really think that she's better than B tier on this list but that's still a lot better than Fa who is an F tier here's God power Given the current meta, given the way people are constructing their bases right now, given the way things are playing out, is not useful at all. Oh, shifting sands, great. At least the underworld passage, say what you will about Apollo, the underworld passage is something you can just, oh, I'm going to pop this right in the middle of the enemy base, and I'm just going to use this to keep sending units into the enemy base. That can work, whereas shifting sands... One time use only. Could be useful for raiding purposes to be sure, but Fa doesn't work in that perspective. His myth unit, probably the worst myth unit in the entire game. I mean, someone has to have the worst, but like, yeah, Wadget's slow, not really effective in combat, easy to take down if you have any kind of anti-myth capability or if your opponent has any kind of anti-myth capability. I mean, could be useful against, you know, Egypt versus Egypt, but that's about it. Against Norse, against Greeks, against Atlanteans, yeah, that's a useless unit to get. It's just going to die very quickly. The upgrades for spearmen, for axemen, for slingers. Well, the Egyptian 
playstyle right now is focused on getting past H2 or just surviving H2 as quickly as possible and then moving to H3 for camels, for chariot archers, maybe for war elephants. So it's not about the H2 units. Like, that's a unique aspect about the Egyptians. Like, they have those H3 specific uh, units. I mean, you can say, well, the Atlanteans do as well, but it's a bit different, I would say, for the Atlanteans because the Atlanteans, you know, have infantry and you can get infantry earlier on and upgrades and all that, whereas the Egyptians, you know, have chariot archers, camels, that have, and elephants that have their own unique upgrades. So how much do you really want to invest in spearmen and axemen and slingers? Very situational from my perspective, and it's like by far and away the worst minor god in the game, flat out. In both team games and in solo games, in 1v1 games. Uh, then we have Sobek. Okay, so the laser crocs, pretty useful as a ranged myth unit, to be sure. Again, you do need to upgrade, and you need a lot of gold to make use of them, but they're pretty strong. Slow, but the amount of damage they can do should not be underestimated, and Egyptians can get a lot of gold, especially if you're playing, uh, you know, if you're playing as Isis. But all the same, I just find Sobek to, like, his, uh, his rock is certainly nice to have in certain ways, but Locust Swarm... Just not particularly great, so I think like B tier at most. Originally, I thought that the rock would be more important, but again, the way people are building bases, the way the games are being played right now, that kind of extra mobility that rocks do give you, and that you know transportation capability is not so important right now. So I could even rate them lower. If we end up in a situation where where people are building bases and games are a bit more static than the constant aggression as it is right now, I would say he would be much higher on this list, but that's not the case at the moment. Then we get Segment. Segment is an A tier. And the reason is, while her defensive benefit, well, it depends. Are you building a forward town center and upgrading it to a citadel? That can be extremely useful. Scarabs, the siege units, situational. I mean, mounted giants are far more useful from my perspective, and obviously Jotuns. But the real benefit of Sekhmet is she buffs her, your chariot archers. That's one particular benefit. And two, quite importantly, that shouldn't be ignored, she gives you catapults one age early. Since a lot of online games do take place within that classical age, heroic age ma uh, matchup, Having catapults one age early is not an insubstantial benefit. In fact, it can be a very substantial benefit because it allows you to just snipe your opponent's base. So if your opponent is trying to play a bit more defensively or if you've got them on the ropes and you just need an extra edge to finish them off, that is a useful thing for segment. Uh, and then we get Nephthys, who is absolutely an S-tier. Ancestors is a great god power. That alone would win her this position but it's not just that you know scorpion men not something to laugh at uh, about either so and crucially she gives you that benefit to pharaohs and priests in particular against myth units and that can be a problem believe it or not for egyptians to deal with those because if your opponent is getting a lot of myth units your pharaoh and your priest may not necessarily have the damage especially like you know against more durable ones like Yotans, Hydras, you may not necessarily have the damage for it. Sure, Hydras and Yotans are slow and all that, but you do still need the inherent damage capability to deal with that. So buffing your priests is a pretty damn big deal, I would say. That is my perspective. Like, it's Ancestors and the Priest Pharaoh buff that really elevates her. Uh, then we have Fat in Age 4. Well, given that they nerf Meteor, it does indicate people are using him. Like, this is a god that people that uh, Microsoft has been nerfing, or World's Edge has been nerfing, Forgotten Empires. Whoever is working on the balancing, I'm not really sure, because there's multiple companies that worked on this game. I'm not sure who's responsible for the multiplayer balancing. Probably Forgotten Empires. Fought has been nerfed in the recent past. So I would say, you know, on one hand, I would like to give him an A tier. I really would. And I think, like, A minus. On one hand, he does have a significant economic benefit. He does buff. He does give you some fairly nice buffs for your Megdal strongholds. He gives you free units. So if you're playing that long game, you can't go wrong with Fat. 
Then we have Osiris. Osiris is absolutely an S tier. The son of Osiris, I think they fixed the ability of healing him in buildings, but like, geez, the son of Osiris is absurd. Talk all you want about earthquake. Talk all you want about uh, talk all you want about God ending abilities or game ending abilities from minor gods. Osiris has the ability of yes, he can be uh, taken down. So you won't win the fight. You still need an army, a pretty decent army, to you know keep him alive. But he will swing the balance of power in a fight so hard it's not even funny. But on top of that, oh yes, mummies are also fairly strong units as well as myth units, like great myth units. And in a larger larger engagement, and you're certainly going to get larger engagements in the mythic age, those mummies can really swing the tide of battle in a very, very substantial way. And that leaves Horus. I think Horus is a C tier. Not horrible, but compared, like, Tornado's good, Avengers good, all that. It's just, he doesn't compare to the other options. You gotta consider this, like, would you want Osiris or Fat, or would you want Horus? I think I would want either Fat or Osiris almost every, in almost every single matchup. Like, the in a long game, in terms of burst of power, yes, Tornado can help you out, sure. But then you have the alternative of Meteor, right? If you can get it. Or you have the alternative of the sign of Osiris, both of those are very strong. And if you're getting to the mythic age as Egyptians, you have really powerful siege. So, and Tornado is not something as useful as either Meteor or, say, Earthquake from Artemis. So I think, like, he gets a C tier over there. Not horrible, far from it. Maybe you could combine, like, if you're getting Fa, like, hilarious enough, you could get Fa and Horus and make it work. I don't think it's worth it, but... That's just my personal perspective. Go see here, sign out, don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications, and stay tuned for more. Next up, the Atlanteans, and I'll leave the Norse for last.